today we chat with Grandmaster Eric Lee. With over 45 years martial arts experience, he is known as the King of Kata. He will share his biggest passions and life advice from his amazing journey, not only as an expert in various styles, but as an artist overall. This is Grandmaster Eric Lee for the Bruce Willow Podcast. Willow. <laughs> Who's Willow? Yeah. You know why w- Willow? I, 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 I. Yes. Because my last name in Portuguese is Salgueiro, which means Willow, the Willow tree. Oh, I see. You know, Willow tree is flexible. Yeah. Salgueiro? Yeah, Salgueiro, yeah. Very strong. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have started doing Kung Fu when I was nine years old. So I still well, can, so I still can have a lot of flexibility. I can do the split. So I'm like, okay, so I want to be strong but flexible. So I'm, I want to be like the willow, like my name. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you know who is uh, Kung Fu's cousin? Who's who's Kung Fu's cousin? Kung Fu's cousin. His name is Tofu. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu's cousin is Tofu. Yeah, nice. I, I read your book. You know, you know uh, okay. You, you know love terrible is, jokes, uh, right? Lee? What? <laughs> I tell a lot of terrible jokes. <laughs> you can tell everybody. I, 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 like, I like everything. I like to eat. I like to train. I like to sing. I like to draw. I like to do calligraphy. I happen to be Lee. And he happened to, I happened to see Bruce Lee when he was... Uh, in Oakland, I live in Oakland, California, yes. before for yeah. 12 years, and then uh, he came to our school where I was training, uh-huh. and uh, he visited where well, Alta Costco was uh, the instructor at that time. And so Al and him are good uh, friends, and then uh, Bruce, before he did any uh, major movie, and he he was in Oakland. He what they call he was researching for the material for him. Wow. So he formed the JKD later on, but he he's not famous then. He's one of the guy. He's only one of the instructor in Oakland. So my my great aunt asked him, mm-hmm. and uh, I say, hey Bruce, I uh, heard you are in the in the hospital. And Bruce said, how the hell you know that? And she said, oh your doctor happened to be my best friend. <laughs> Was it when Bruce Lee hurt his back training? Yes, yeah. oh, he went wow. to hospital. He did not hurt his back from fighting. He hurt his back from working out. <laughs> working out, yeah. The guy is crazy, right? Always yeah, doing cross when training. When you do too much, you can hurt yourself. Mm. You know that. Yes, 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 yes. So, Sifu, I wanted to ask you something. First and foremost, it's been a really tough year for pretty much everybody. But a lot of people from the martial arts that I've been interviewing, they say something like, well... It was another stone to turn, right? All this COVID, all the confinement. It was something difficult to deal with. But for someone who's been working on his mindset and his physique for a long time, how did 2020 strike you, sir? 2020, nothing can stop. Um, We are going to... My grandfather was born in... Uh, 1894. So he went to the Spanish flu, World War One, World War Two. So I didn't go to anything like that. So 2020, it's um, we lose some of the freedom mm-hmm. to express who we are, and because in life, as you know, we have to be true to yourself. Do what you love to do, and if you got chance to do it, do it. And for my Myself, uh, I say the only thing for last year, part last year and this year, I didn't get a chance to share uh, my what I developed for the other people, not as much. But we're doing in digital f- format right now, Zooming, yeah. uh, doing podcasts like this. Yes. And that's what we can do. Uh, everything, 95% of the stuff is sent to us. So it's different. Than last 
than before. One of the things that I really loved about your book is that you don't only count your story, but you also try to help the reader get some good life advice. And one of the things that I love the most is that when you started competing, you used the crowd, you used their energy, you used That's a right. lot of your, you had like little tips and tricks that you learned along the way with your experience, not only in the costumes and the uniforms that you used, trying to be the last one to go and do the forms. I mean, all of that comes from experience, that expertise, but a lot of people nowadays with all being so digitalized, all being online, all being through a computer, they will not have the access or they won't even bother to try and go and have that experience. So how do we teach the youngsters to do the things live and to get that energy from people? Because from a computer, you never get the same energy, right, Sifu? It's not the same. Fortunately, when I first training, uh, we didn't have all the computer, uh, all this... Uh, all these gadgets so it's very easy to focus i myself like to focus but right now i i can make movie because i have i i i, I, I know how to do that because I, i'm trained for that and i taught classes in ucla mm -hmm. and uh, on stunt fighting so the, the the book go back to what you're saying it is that basically I like to share and make people happy by what I know because I'm only camping here. I tell you one thing, unless I am uh, buried on the ground or something, if I sit, lay down on my coffin when I'm dead, I don't want a whole lot of enemy to stick a needle on my dead body. I can't do anything about it. So I think that's uh, in martial arts, To me, all style, whatever style, to me is only we are family. So I have no problem with world champion, street fighter. Everybody is same. Yo, you have we have to be nice, no matter what title you have. Oh, you know you're the best in the world. That's everybody is a. You, we can learn something from anybody. Yeah. My student, I have 40 black belts. I told them. If I, if you know something that I didn't know, I become your student. Yes. No that's, problem. That's, that's a great Just philosophy. Like yeah. Uh, and the same thing here. My book, you've seen it. Yeah. You know, this book. Yes. I have. I read the ebook. If you like it, tell your friend you like it. If you don't like it, don't tell your friend. Forget <laughs> it. Eric Lee story sucks. <laughs> if I like it, I tell my same friends. Thing. If I don't like it, I'll tell my enemies. <laughs> What matters is that people share, right? Yes. Same thing. If I sing a song, yeah. I tell my friend. If you like like it, tell tell everybody. If if I if you don't like it, tell tell everybody. Eric Lee sucks. Don't <laughs> listen to his voice. I have no problem with that. It's it's Now, wonderful. I, I don't believe in I don't believe in success or fail. That's, I don't re believe in retire. Retire meaning tire twice, tire and tire again. <laughs> exactly. Retire. So I don't believe, I don't care. Just do what you love to do and share with the people you love and you care. That's what it's all about. And also the other thing, uh, I heard this story, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. All her review, all her gossip is all bad. Oh. She pronounced twice, twice, dead twice she said i read my own habituary that's the best review i ever got <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. doesn't really matter <laughs> so in reality whatever people think of you is really none of our business i it doesn't matter you just do your best and no matter how nice you are you, you go people are not gonna like it mm, but that's yeah. okay yeah they say no that matter the... you world champion you're the best uh doctor you're the millionaire trillionaire it doesn't matter i know people really rich and i know people cannot even eat yeah. it doesn't really matter nobody too big nobody too small for me they just like everybody else yeah see, sure. in That's... reality i seen a full contact fighter mm -hmm. he he was very good he, he just knocked the guy out first round and he said thank you for giving me a chance to work work out with you and i apologize 
that uh, the result. And so in martial arts, uh, fighting is one thing, but martial ethic is very important. That's human. Yes. So if you only think, oh, I'm the greatest and all that, and uh, but the person has the you know his boundary is he his ego his ego is the one who controlling for him to go further than his own mind mm. so just forget about it yeah. doesn't matter just do your best and share with uh even chuck nor jackie chan there are people that i know that didn't like them there's nothing wrong with them but i like them but there are people who don't like them yeah so what are you gonna do yeah nobody is perfect One of the things that I, I, I became very nostalgic about, about, I visited Hong Kong two years ago and I went to some of the places. Oh, yes, I went to some of the places, uh, some of the locations from Bruce Lee's movies and etc. And I, I, I read in the book that uh, some of the old days that you spent in Hong Kong were some of the best in your life, right? Because everything was happening all the time. Can you give us a little bit of that feeling of Hong Kong in the old days while growing up? Okay. I was in Hong Kong for many years and that time I was very young and then Hong Kong um, was a British and the teacher and everybody very strict and then I was watching a lot of black and white kung fu movie <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, back to the 50s <laughs> like Wong Fei Hong and uh, I met a gentleman he was over 100 years old he portrayed he was a good guy he studied the Hong Kong style mm -hmm. and then uh, the bad guy was uh, Sak Kin from Into the Dragon oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah Mr. I mean, Mr. Han Mr. I mean, Han yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I also met the other gentleman. His name is Quan Tuck Hank. This yeah. is way before Bruce Lee was even known. It was Wong so Fei Hong. Before, Wong Fei Hong, right? From the TV series. Uh, Wong Fei Hong. He, uh, this man, uh, Quan Tuck Hank, portrayed Wong yeah. Fei Hong. I met him when he's over 100 years old. Wow. <laughs> in wow. San Francisco. I met him. And uh, that time, my uncle has a theater. So I was watching movie for free he got a big theater and john wing movie i say wow oh. cowboy <laughs> so watch a lot of cowboy movie and I, and then i went back to hong kong and study uh, many style I, I have so many style that i'm interested so it doesn't really matter there's no such thing as just today not too many things <clears throat> style doesn't mean anything to me and and we will more beyond style we can learn from each other yeah <clears throat> now life to me is is not perfect it's always under construction mm -hmm. up and down up and down hopefully it all, depending on how we look at it so it's perfectly imperfect so it's perfect oh nice i love that philosophy <laughs> you're such a you're such a positive even through the computer you're such a positive aura you know you you're such yeah, a positive yeah, yeah. mindset that to we feel good just talking to you sir i i want to people when i hang up with somebody if they need help i give them energy mm -hmm. and uh, i get energy from them by giving believe it or not yes yeah, same thing when i compete i get energy from the judge competitor from this you know or everybody so that's the way i look at things uh try to shed more light on the other people and they shed that on me so everybody that i know my friends that some of them are going away like ed parker and people like that mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, he's a good friend of mine him and i always tell jokes around each other mm -hmm. i used to promote tournaments uh we used to promote the big one we promote 1980 was in oakland coliseum the expo. 14 000 people show up the expo a lot right? of people yeah yeah uh and then Later on, uh, before that, we were promoting all kinds of tournament. You know how in old days, as before the full contact, and so uh, this 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 uh, instructor say, "How come your judge don't see the point?" So they complain and fighting each other, and we we got all these things. We decided, Sid Campbell, my good friend, 
and unfortunately he passed away. Mm -hmm. And then him and I decided to promote martial arts luau. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about luau. <laughs> so all these guys got drunk and make it up. They were hooking each other before they were fighting. Yeah, because because I don't now get. they're uh, hooking each other. Yeah, I I don't get how people get so competitive and so. And, and so into the, the just the fighting aspect of martial arts. I know it's important, obviously, but after all, the, the idea of a luau where people get together and party and have some fun right. and actually discuss a little bit of their styles is much better than just the points, the sparring, the who won, my student won, no, your student won, no, that student. Oh, my God. That's, that's so... It doesn't so, really that be matter. Poisonous. It's only a yeah. game. Yeah. It's only a fun yeah, it's only fun. It's so, only fun. you know, I know you've been a lot of tournament, buddy. Um, you know, I uh, I was born in China, and I see everything's organic. I just, you know, when we, when we take a dump, we put in the fertilizer, and the, pro, the the yam grow up, we wash them, we eat the same thing. So that's, so it's organic. I never seen any canned food in in China. <laughs> I never been in a hospital in China. My fa my mom, Cut my umbilical cord with a scissors. Oh, sh oh, that is old school. That is yeah, old just school. like that. Boom. Oh my goodness, it it must yeah. it, it must so have been very to Hong Kong, tough. <laughs> tough lady. <laughs> when I went to Hong Kong, that's when we see all this canned food and everything. Hospital. I say, wow, this village is really big. It's <laughs> actually a city. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought it was a village. So how? But anyway, over the years. Now we have everything, you know, at a doorstep, you know, we go to a supermarket and it's like, what kind of meat do you want? What kind of cow? What kind of <laughs> pork? What kind of, you know, it, was that a, yeah. was that a huge transition ever since you was, you were uh, a little kid to, to, to watching nowadays, how people have so many things that it's hard to focus and it's hard to choose one thing out of all. Right. Right. Wow. We have, uh, you know, I still, I'm kind of uh, glad that I was born in China, seen I was living in Central America, as you read the book, mm -hmm. and I went to Chile, many places in Europe, and then I seen many, many people live, and I watched TV, all the documentary, and different parts of the world, I, I watched Portugal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. On TV. <laughs> yeah, I never been there, but I see, wow, it's beautiful, nice place, and then, uh, so maybe later on I go and you talk about Luau. My goddaughter is one of her name is uh, Kamisato Lisha, mm -hmm. and she was Miss Maui. And uh, many years ago, she's in her thirties now. I knew her when she was four. So I know Hawaii. My heart belongs to Hawaii. There's more aloha, more sharing, caring, and more giving and more love in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And most the states in like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and we, everybody compete, try to get better. That's why uh, even the title of your book, by calling yourself an artist, you are moving from the idea of just a martial artist, just a grandmaster. I mean, oh, yeah. you're a master of, of life. life, right? It's life, it's everything. There's so much beauty in music. There's so much beauty in writing and literature. There's so much beauty in the martial arts. I think that you're, you might be addicted to beauty, right, sir? <laughs> well, I'm trying to be the, try to be uh, ethical and try to be a good role model for some of the young people that lost it mm. or never had one. So I'm trying to share this. Uh, for me, I feel harmony. Uh, what I do with the other people, I have, I, I don't, I'm not a competitor anymore, but in a high level, they say martial art is way of life. And so we have to go beyond our ego in order to go further in alignment uh, as a way of life. Not just, oh, I can kick harder, I can punch harder, I can knock somebody out. It doesn't mean anything. You can have a little kid and poke you on your eyeball with a needle. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt. You get, you're not gonna see. <laughs> a small <laughs> so thing, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. a small little guy, ten years old. They can, they can hurt you. <laughs> so, nice perspective. I, it's I, true. I never if thought of that. If you ever yeah. study martial art, <laughs> yeah. it can hurt you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But, uh, right. Sifu, uh, I, I know that uh, by the time you were competing and you stole the show and it came to forms, uh, I mean, how, how was a typical day of training for you? I want to feel that inspiration of what time did you get up? How many times a day did you train? How was a typical day for Eric Lee? Well, uh, in those days, we didn't have computer games. We didn't have internet. <laughs> and then I uh, just was very inspired by the that old timer in a film or in the action, uh, in the martial arts schools, and say, how can one become so powerful and so fast? So I was infatuated with their performance. And and then when I was in, as you read the book, when I was in uh, middle school, somebody shot me, bang, right in my head. And that motivated me to learn how to, to do the real thing. And uh, as you know, I first teaching was in Oakland, California, in YWCA. 19th, I think long time ago, like uh, 67 or something. And then uh, on Webster Street, that's the same street but Wong Jack Man were Bruce Lee oh. fought in the same my my grandfather's poetry shop, Kalanki, is two blocks away from that school. And that's what Bruce Lee fought. Wow. So and <laughs> that's way back. That's a long that's history now. That's history, man. I have the one of the original Chung Fan poster from James Lee. Oh really? <laughs> From, from the yeah, school, from Jun Fang Gong. Here. Wow. Oh, I have the poster here. My girlfriend just bought me the poster. Can yes. I show it to you? Of course, of course, please. Yes. The original Kung Fu, Jun Fang Kung Fu poster. Such a treasure. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I can't believe I'm going to see okay. this. Okay, let me pull back a little bit. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, oh, my. Oh, this is the Jun Fang poster. Yeah. I don't know. You can see it. Yes, yes. No, okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Here. You can pull it up because yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Oh. Okay. Wow. Bruce Lee. And is it Taki Bruce Kimura? Lee here. No. Who with whom? Uh, no, Taki? James Lee. Oh, James Lee. James Lee. Taki is right here. <laughs> wow. Right here. Taki Kimura, Bruce Lee, yeah. and that's in the backyard. And the poster was selling how much? Five dollars. <laughs> Five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> now it's like now it's like five grand or no 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 fifty grand. No no no. This is this is just, uh, something I have. To be, I don't have. Beautiful. I don't have the show. That is uh, beautiful. He's, uh, he doing the basic stuff. Uh huh. Lap sao, back sao, uh. Uh, see, I used to study that style too. Yes, from Wing Chun. a man named Leung Sang. He's uh, one of the Bruce Lee number one student. Mm. Uh, he's a teacher. He was so good. He was doing the sticky hand like this, but he smoked. He go like this, bang, <clears throat> like that. He just, uh, I oh. just pull all the way back like ten feet. He was on a chair and smoking. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's skill, <laughs> skill. You know the that's beauty of the art. Ago beauty of the art but i you know i don't have any problem with any style i like every everything we can learn from each other but how was a typical day yeah. what time I, I i want to feel inspired what 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 time did you wake up how many training sessions did you have a day oh i i live breathe and it's in my in the, it, you know martial arts in your dna yeah you yeah. can do anything without it and i was fascinated i was uh, determined to get good and uh it, it's fun it's, it's you know you learn new technique and you just practice it when i give a seminar in other country like mexico mm -hmm. and one technique they practice for four hours one technique Ooh. so the discipline is different so um how many hours I was overtraining? <laughs> <laughs> Too many hours. Too uh, many hours. I didn't know about resting. I just, my mind just want to train. That's all. Mm. So I train a lot, six, seven hours a day. Wow. Doing, doing those days. I Now I know you need to train, eat, 
rest and rebuild <laughs> in that order <laughs> because uh, you can just train over train yourself and you gotta burn out yes one of the things that i like to talk about in my channel is the fitness aspect of the martial arts the conditioning and one of the things that we brush on is nutrition uh what type of what type of care do you have with your personal diet when you were competing uh, and right now first of all i happen to be lucky i live in an herb shop my father is a herbalist and he owns two two herb shop one and we have the pharmacist and then a doctor a cook and the herbalist all live there and i have my dog and my <laughs> sisters all live there all, everybody lived there so you were and, taken uh, care of you were taken care of yeah <laughs> Yes, and then uh, I, f I feel for everybody up there, first thing, if you learn how to hit, you have to learn how to heal. Mm, yes. That is like... So my diet, home. my diet, um, try to, you get older and you lay off the fat, like uh, chicken skin, mm -hmm. a lock, uh, too much cheese, uh, <laughs> Any uh, French fries, I don't eat those things. Mm. And uh, I eat vegetable, I drink uh, purified water. And I, when I work out, I go to elliptical, I close my eye, do slow motion, like Tai Chi. Oh. And I sing the song I like at the same time I'm developing my mind. And uh, my body's working at the same time. So my cardio is there already. And then the other things when i was training in the old days fitness wise i um i like like uh, my book i do sprint so i have a lot of energy uh, in the lung therefore i can go for a distance I, I, I run 100 yard dash and walk back i do that like at least 20 times oh. and then i mix and then of course on your form you have to a uh, weapon you have to be different and then uh, you have to prepare mentally, psychologically, and you, you don't think about anything. But if somebody do a kick that really good, and some of the artists, they might get discouraged. Oh, you do better kick than me. I, I think different. I say, you do that kick pretty good. I do better. Mm -hmm. So that's, you can call that when I was younger, I retired October 1973 from competition. That's how long ago. But I'm still in pretty good shape because I work out and uh, I meditate, I do Tai Chi, and then I eat and I rest, I rebuild. I don't try, I try not to overtrain myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to pace yourself. Everybody should pace themselves. Just because we are, we want to be good at something, we have to have motivation. We, I think everybody have to uh, reinvent themselves because let's say you got older 90 years old 80 years old you're not going to be able to do things in your 20s so we just do different for me um i like to do things not so dangerous all this dangerous stuff I already done long time ago like car racing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh <laughs> stunt i don't do that anymore because why why waste yourself you know, yeah. by doing it. so things I'm um, driving and driving moderation. And then I, I do music, which is good for my mind, good for other people as well. Mm -hmm. You find a uh, chemistry, the things that fit your chemistry, give you endorphin, uh, make you feel good and makes other pe people feel good. And they might not like your song. That's OK, because you like it and you share they they it. They are entitled to do their own opinion. Yeah. They are going to express themselves what they want, what they feel, how they react. It doesn't matter to you. You just do it, you know. And uh, um, that one thing for sure, you can think so many people that I know, they want to do this, they want to do that, they want to do that, except they don't take action. Action is the key. You have to take action in order to you get things, get the result. You and I, let's say, giving 100 years on this lifetime is not enough. Yeah, yeah. It should be 5,000, 10,000. Yeah, sometimes I feel uh, like that. I'm just, 
I'm just dreaming, okay? I'm mm. not going to live that long. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, I'm still, what I'm doing actually keeping me young, singing, act, working out, uh, giving, giving me young. So I don't want to feel like, uh, uh, you know, when you on a wheelchair and then uh, have uh, assistant living, all those things. Uh, yeah, unless you, unless you are in that that position that you can have it, you need somebody to assist you. But we are not in that in that. So I can still, luckily, I can still look because my training. I can still do the things I did in the twenties, but I'm not as interested mm -hmm. in doing those things because once upon a time it was okay, but now it's different. Mm, there's a time and a place okay. for everything, right, Sifu? Time, timing yeah, is, you're timing correct. is very, very 100%. important. So, how did so you... anything you like to know, I'd be able to share with you. Well, how did you get into? I kept no secret. <laughs> Thank you so much. No secret for me. How did you get into the movies? How did that happen? Movie? Okay. <clears throat> I uh, I turned down one of the independent movie, and I got into the movie. The first movie I did was Killer Elite by James Kahn. This man who wrote the script, his name Sterling. is Sterling yeah. Sullivan. Yeah, uh, he was a Bruce okay. Lee student, right? Yeah, and mm. later on he became my student when Bruce Lee got busy. Mm. So Bruce Lee asked him, a, uh, no, not not to put down anybody, but Bruce Lee was a super athlete. He can do things. And this man, Sterling Sullivan, he's a writer. He's not as good shape. So therefore, <laughs> Sifu, he's talking about Bruce Lee. Yeah. I think I'm going to die. They say, so he said, you're going to die then. Why don't you just stop dead right now? <laughs> That's not uh, to me. I would say I can't say that because that would hurt his feeling. He's gonna get discouraged. He is not Bruce Lee. Okay, <laughs> so therefore, I sometimes, as a writer like him, he's actually the role model for Stephen King. I heard. Oh, nice, nice. Well, he's yeah. an old timer. If you see his movie, uh, Towering Inferno. Airport 75, way back to a 60s and 70s. And then uh, he's a good man, very, very nice, very nice. And I became the instructor for him and his wife, Tiana Sullivan. Oh, okay. So that was how and it And also, began? Uh, yeah, I met a lot of people, John Saxon, Bolo Young, I got a picture with him. Actually, it's in my book. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Good old young, yeah. We got he's photos. the same height as me, but he's thicker, bigger. You know? <laughs> he's, 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 huge. Bigger <laughs> he's huge. He's <laughs> huge. Yeah. Uh, but how did you get <laughs> discovered for that movie? How okay, did you, let how me did, tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman, a martial artist. His name's Rick Alamini. Mm -hmm. And Rick knows my background. He knows what, what I do. And so I still, because... Uh, the director, uh, the time, and uh, he direct Dirty Dozen. You know who is? Oh yes, yes, yes. I know the movie. Okay, yeah. I have to show him that I can do this, and I, I do I do my thing, and he say, okay, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's, that's why I met. That's why I met uh, uh, the first time Sterling Sullivan, Taki. Uh, let's see, uh, Daniel No Santo. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Okamura and uh, James Khan mm. and Taki Kam uh, Takaboda. He's a James Khan teacher. Oh. So I met a whole bunch of guys in that movie. And uh, <clears throat> it was my second movie, not the first one. Yes. Wh which one? Uh, so the, the first one was your, with your friend, right? The first one. No, right. I did a movie, uh, Pay the Bad Guy. Well, not a bad guy, really a mutual guy, and uh, it's called Death Machine. And but I did some movie you can see on YouTube. It's it's not that bad, you know. It's called Weapons of Death on YouTube. Yes, Free. yes, I saw that Weapons one. Of Death. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, so there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to do mm -hmm. because what happened when you get older? A lot of people in. Uh, the system in uh, in I don't in the modern world is designed, at least in the United States, it designed 
for you, they don't respect older people. In uh, old days, they respect more older people because they feel, oh, this is my extension of my chi, my family, my grandson, my son, or whatever. So we lose that because money become the god, and that's uh, so money to me is important, but not that important. Mm, okay. Yeah. You gotta pay your bill. You gotta do it. You know. And uh, so to me, what I enjoy and sharing with other people is more important to me. Mm. I do that. I like everything. And like I said, money doesn't okay. bring chi, right? Chi can be money for some people. Chi like your martial art. Your interview people is extension giving people to express their their point of view. Exactly. Whatever they're believing in, because in reality, we are only <clears throat> our boundary is our is our how far we can go. Your ego and your boundary. If you go beyond, forget yourself. So oftentimes, in reality, we are in the middle of a blind spot. So. Mm -hmm. Three at least three times I ask people. Uh, usually, people know me thirty years or longer. And what is my blind spot? What do you see me that I don't see myself? So I get. I I'm, I just want to see their point of view. Therefore, uh, so I can correct myself. Mm, okay. Good. I good, can good. correct myself to take from other people's because experience, reality, right? Yeah, that's the way you, we have to be open-minded because we we want to do certain thing. We're gonna do certain thing. Uh, so, but somebody else look at different. They might be right. Yeah. They might be right. So I listen to them. Holy tomato! You should be a fashion model. Look at that beautiful skin. Do you like Chinese food, huh? Whoa! I never saw anybody as beautiful as you. My father said I'm Chinese and I believe him. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you a joke. I okay. believe him. <laughs> why? Tell me. Why don't they have telephone books in China? I don't know. Too many wings and wongs, they can wing the wong number. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, Howard Jackson, you probably know, yeah, Howard yeah. Jackson and Bill Wallace and myself. Three of us travel around the circuit to compete at tournament. Mm -hmm. So in those days, you cannot say it now, uh, but I can say that to you. They call Honky, which is he called himself Honky. They call me Ching, and they call Howard Jackson. He's a black man, Blackie. So nowadays, if I say that, they will kill me. Oh, they will kill you. <laughs> they will kill you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> nowadays, everything is taboo. To, yeah. That's a long time ago. And uh, so it's forgotten already. Yeah. And so you folks out there, whoever listen to that, don't follow that. Don't say that. <laughs> don't ever. Exactly. Keep your mouth shut. Yes. Everybody should. Be. And I, I, I talked to uh, Cindy Ralfrat. Um, I knew Cindy a long, long time ago. We're just friends, you know. Yeah. And uh, she did a movie, Hong Kong movie, and she had the butch hair, and she was kicking butt in a movie. And then uh, interpretation, the Chinese guy said, you so rough. How are you going to find yourself a husband? <laughs> 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 it's just moving, you know? <laughs> yeah! Oh! The first time I saw you, uh, Sifu, was in uh, Ring of Fire, the Kwong. Oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, do you have any cool stories, uh, backstage stories about those movies for PM Entertainment, Pep and Mary Entertainment? Yeah. Um, well, they are different. Every picture <laughs> is different. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is different. To me, uh, film business is really... Uh, supposed to be for fun. It's not, and I told some of the people, and uh, you're an entertainer, you're supposed to be entertaining people. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why they call it entertainment. But then also they call it show business. And but if you know how to show, you have to know the business part in order to succeed. But um, not everybody understand that. But the entertainment industry, it's a it's a fun business to be in. And nowadays, because you can even film, do a, a movie with your camera. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah, in the old days, you you need to everything is shot in the film or panavision. It costs millions of dollars. Nowadays, you don't. Anybody can do a movie. Just do it. You mm -hmm. might. So many people that I know waiting for the big break, and and it never happened. And uh, I know a lot of people. Bill Duke, you know, uh, if you look at the internet, Bill Duke is one of my students also. Art Camacho is one of my black belt. Oh, yeah, I love art. Yeah. He, he trained under me. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> I got him started, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. This guy is a choreographer later on, promote as a, uh, as a uh, director. Yeah, I love, I love those he movies. Went, I he love went those to movies. Russia and directed. He directed a movie in Russia. He just came back not too long ago. Oh wow, nice, nice. I I love your movies. Your your movies like Ring of Fire, Ring of Fire Two, Fists of Iron. I love that movie as well with Michael. Oh, Worth. You, you watch all that. Yeah? I watch all that. <laughs> yeah, I watched all that. I, I I went to the to the video store and I always rented the movies with you and you were in all of those movies and I really loved it very much. But it's funny how, how those films in a way, you know, it's entertainment and it, you, it, people should not take it very seriously. Sometimes I know that actors and even martial artists who become actors, they get into serious problems, you know, on their mindset and psychological problems because they start taking themselves too seriously so i love the way that you okay acting is just one other things that i can do um but in a way it's serious because you know it shaped minds of people like me because i went to the video store every day to pick up and to rent oh. those videos and I, i i would watch them like 10 times in a row and i would watch <laughs> all your fight scenes like in venice beach and on the ring and uh that little bar scene that you have Uh, with uh, Michael Worth uh, in uh, in the, the the movie Fist of Iron, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and those are great yeah, it's, scenes. Uh, it's, it's 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 fun, you know. And I know a lot of people in the movie, and now I'm I can. There's a guy named Danny Lopez. You can look at look him up. Mm -hmm. uh, he I I I said to him, okay, I want to do a horror movie. It's not my favorite. But it is inexpensive to make, and so I say you can be the producer, director, anything you want. Don't you find a whole cast? I find I find the money for you, and uh, I have somebody else. You do the whole thing. If the movie turn out, they be good. Well, maybe I put my name on it, but I'm not in it. Uh -huh. uh, but if movie turn out to be, to be bad, take my name off. <laughs> That's being producer, right? Okay, okay, I'll be a producer if the movie goes well. If not, oh, I, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, safe face. I'm already, uh, luckily, I'm, uh, I'm past the glamour thing already. I've seen a lot of things in my lifetime, and uh, I've been lucky, and uh, I didn't, I'm still, believe it or not, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm in 70s, early 70s. I have no pain in my body. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I have no pain. Everybody I'm... in my age, they have back pain, good <laughs> pain, that pain, shoulder pain, everything. I'm 36 so and I'm, I, all, I'm 36. I I've, been, I've, been, I've been really blessed. I'm 36 and I'm always aching. So, I mean, you, I, I, I listen to that and I'm like, okay, that's inspiring. <laughs> Yeah, take it easy, and <laughs> you deserve to take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> the thing about it, if you if you get tired, you say no. I even tired. I still want to train. Actually, you need to replenish your chi before you go for oh. next one. You, uh, you know, for me, and I, uh, I relax and meditate and uh, do. I walk with my dog. I have a jack. Russell, can you bring the dog here, honey? <laughs> I have a, a little dog. dog. Yeah. Jack Russell Terry. I'm going to, she's bringing the dog right now. Oh, beautiful. And she was born in April uh, 6, 
2015, she's in a lot of my movie. Oh. Look here, call her name. What's her name? What's Bella. her name? Bella. 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 Hello, Bella. Bella. Yeah. Hello, Hello Bella. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign Bella. Just sign. <laughs> she's got the uh, separation anxiety when I'm not. Mm. When I go out, when I say you stay, and she start to cry. Oh. You, uh, Go ahead. You were talking about meditation, and I'm really curious about what are your daily rituals? Uh, what do you usually do daily? Like, uh, what type of meditation do you do? Or can you give any sort of advice for people who want to try out meditation, who feel very stressed out? What can they do? What type of meditation can they do? Not Simple everybody idea. can just shut the brain off because they're going too fast. They call what they call monkey brain. Mm, yeah. Always Monkey picking on everything like ba, 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 never, right? never, never stop thinking. Like loop. so, this kind of people, I tell them to count one, two, three, four, inhale, and then five, six, seven, eight, and start over. When they focus on the number, they forget uh, the other things. That's one other thing mm. for the people with monkey brain. For the people that is uh, always relaxed, they don't care anything. They can do the chanting meditation, uh, say, uh, like TM. You talking about TM? TM? Transcendental meditation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, uh, you can do that with a mantra, but they got to oh. consult a professional uh, teacher. And then uh, you don't have to do the traditional meditation. I sit straight and with a hand crossed like this. By the way, this thumb here, that's mm -hmm. your, that is the, uh, the lung meridian, okay? okay? This one here is large intestine. So when you put the two fingers together like this, it's called mudra. Mm. Okay, the middle finger, American, called a bird. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> this is actually the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is called a pericardium, the cover of your heart right here. And this is called a triple warmer, the, the ring finger, triple warmer. And this is the upper body, middle body, digestive and reproductive. Mm -hmm. They call triple warmer, this is called small intestine. So if you put the thumb and the, the middle finger together, the lung and the heart, and they can do that. Oh, uh, you can do half and half, or you can do it like this. Uh -huh. So when you run upward like this, you have more energy than than you don't. So oh. you don't go like this, go like this because you pull yourself back. When you go sideways like this, your hand sideways like this, and you got your gravity, you got actually can save a lot of energy. That means you can go for longer distance. Oh, I, I, I will just I just wanted to finish before we go. I just wanted to ask you something because I know you love to sing. And I know that in Hong Kong was probably the first time that you had your inspirations about singing. And you love some of the artists that I love as well, like Paul Anka, Elvis Presley. What are some of your favorite artists, some of your favorite musicians? I like everybody. <laughs> I actually went to Diana Ross uh 76th birthday oh nice. Diana Ross. yeah i know yeah and then i i've i have the uh, can you show me can you take a guitar honey yeah please uh, sing I have something the original i have one of the guitar uh signed by uh celine dion oh nice. she's getting it right now yeah so i collect things i like things i can play guitar keyboard and all this saxophone no problem can can we can we finish the interview with with having you sing a little something for us? Uh yeah, I uh, I have a song I record already. I'm not gonna sing because oh. I already talk a lot. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. We are all ready for you, sir. Uh, one at a time. This is a guitar. Mm -hmm. Wow, from Celine Dion. Yeah. Yeah. So, such such so, an honor. Yes, a guitar. And uh, this is her signature right there. Again, oh. it's hard to see, but that's her. Oh. Celine Dion. Nice, yeah. Now I'm going to sing a song, old song. Can you hear it? Yeah. Oh, my love. <laughs> 
Share with everybody. Thank you so yeah. much, Sifu. Okay. Mm. So this is, um, we've been doing martial art more than half century. So you have to reinvent ourselves by doing something that you love. Mm. And that's keep keep us going. Uh, this lifetime is fun, uh, active, but next lifetime I might be a couch potato. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> because of all <laughs> because of all the things you've done, it's like we deserve a rest next lifetime, right? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I was just joking. Uh, What's it? I love well, anything... I love the sentence. I love that sentence that you say, which is, "I want to inspire before I expire." Right? That is a sentence that you use. That is right. Yeah, I love that sentence. It's That's so great. The key. Yeah. Well, everybody got something in them they just don't know it so you let them know uh, hopefully some of the words they will find something in them 
would inspire them to do something before they check out of here. Mm. Sifu, I want to say thank you for this perfect moment in time and uh, not only for the songs, for the inspiration, for the book that I read uh, and I devoured it this afternoon. So I want to thank you for taking the time because I've been wanting to chat with you for quite some time and uh, to feel a little bit of that inspiration and that emotion in everything you do. I have one more thing to say yeah. to the, some of the folks up there. Mm -hmm. the, a, turtle, a turtle never goes anywhere unless he sticks his neck out. <laughs> Take action. Yeah. Do nothing. Yeah. It's, it's not my smell. Thank you for the energy so, because that, that is really that is really inspiring. Thank you so much, sir. Take care. Uh, and thank okay. you thank your girlfriend as well because it's been it's been a huge help as well. And thank you for showing your memorabilia as well. <laughs> See you. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.